right, uh, cranking it up again. Here we go. We're back. Bo Schwartz, take it okay. away. Okay, Varel is slicing off parts of the of the basilisk of what Diantalus referred to as a basilisk in the center of this cavernous room. Its body lies still. Its eyes lifeless. As its legs sprawl out in all directions underneath it, having given out in its weight. It's also smoldering and cooking from the lightning Diantalus brought forth. I'll go ahead and call diplomacy back directly into the scabbard. Very well, and one fell swoop, diplomacy flies to your side and into your scabbard. Well, north or south? <laughs> Wait, didn't we come? We gotta go south. We came from north. There's two exits in this room. Uh, there's a the direction you came in, which was north, but just off to the right from the entrance into this room, there's another northward passage. In addition, you see a passage leading south. Passage the basilisk appeared to be positioned in front of. Do we dare check out this way? As long as Varel's in the lead. I have begun, unless interrupted, a short rest using my cunning artisan, and I'm fashioning javelins from the beast. <laughs> Very good. From his bed of um, oh. spikes. If Varel on the, on wants to take path. the time, I wouldn't be opposed to it. We yeah. can let him do so. Hope we'll try and fix her arm during this time. Yay, short rest. <laughs> you can take upwards of an hour to make as... Do you have a, a, a number of javelins you'd like, or would you like to make as many as you can? Uh, it says a javelin, so or 1d4 darts, or... So I think it's restricted to a javelin. Is this a once per day thing, Do you, or can you use it as many times as you like? Because no, as part of the short rest, you can harvest bone and hide from a slain beast, construct, dragon, monstrosity, or plant size creature of large or small, mm -hmm. and create one of the following items. Okay, well, if that's how it's specifically stated, then you can make yourself one of the items. Cool. Then I will make a javelin. You now have a javelin made of the spikes on, of the carapace of a basilisk. That's oh, nice. Kick ass. Do I get the handgun unjammed? Um, so you can use this time with a short rest to, uh, you see that the, the bullet was stuck midway between the chamber and where the magazine is. Luckily it didn't backfire in your weapon. Diane Talis so will use this time to just go kind of plop down on a wall, breathing a little a little heavily from the exertion of the witch bolt. You can also roll hit dice during your short rest to recover lost hit points. Yep, I'm using one myself. Very good. While you do that, I'm leaning on the opposite wall of wherever Diantalus is. And I take the small doll out of my pocket and just sort of stare at it while you guys do your stuff. Okay. As you reach into your pocket, uh, you're bitten. <gasps> By, By what? A sandwich? By what? <laughs> you take one point of damage. <laughs> what? Damage off. What do we want to bit me? Well, if you pull your hand out, maybe you'll look. <laughs> Don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> do you make eye contact? Are you averting your gaze? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take my hand out and go. Bah! <laughs> that you take, your, you take your hand out and you see a black green mound of flesh attached to your fingers with teeth on it. It's about the size of a softball. I was bit! It's attached <gasps> to your finger currently. I think the... <laughs> I think the pit from that thing bit me. I thought I was dead. Kill it! I don't know what to do. I'm going to start just slamming it on the side of this wall with my hand doing this. <laughs> Make an attack roll. What am I? F <laughs> Charging it during the break. Uh, there we go. Seventeen. Okay. You smack it against the wall. 
bam, and on the first smack, uh, you're, it's able to. Re- it's not very strong, whatever is holding, and it falls to the ground. And you just see this. Bring your light up to it, and you see this black green softball. Think kind of like a mad ball with a mouth. It's got like a little sarlacc pit mouth. Like a little rounded. Just a little, just a little mouth with teeth, and it's going. And it sort of bounces around and chomps. All right. I'm going to take the dagger I'm carrying and st- stab it through the mouth. Okay, make an attack roll. Okay. That would be a 12. Okay, so you bring your knife down and pierce its pierce it right in its mouth. And stick it into the ground. You, it goes. <laughs> and it chops on the dagger. Okay. So it's still, still dead. Seems to have signs of life in it. Oh, would you like to roll damage your damage dice for the dagger, please? Yeah. Three. Okay. So even though you have it stabbed and pinned into the ground, it appears to continue chopping on your knife to no avail. Is this the Nash Maggot protector of life we're watching? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up for a second. I yell from across the, the thing. Um, I'm going to back up and point blank a firebolt right in its freaking stupid maw. Okay, let's attack roll. Uh, let's do... A perfect 20, or not perfect, a natural 20. A perfect mm-hmm. 20. <laughs> the best 20s. You have the best 20s. Um, Alright, uh, double damage dice, please. Alright. Plus your modifier. I think that makes it 4d10, right? 4d10 is correct. Oops, I have d6s out. Uh, that is a grand total of 16 damage. Okay, you fire out the, the the firebolt at it, and you hit it directly in its mouth where it's pinned by the, the dagger, and it explodes <laughs> in a burst of flame <laughs> as the flame consumes all of the black-green flesh. And it there's a fine mist. <laughs> and then pieces of its body sort of slowly like feathers fall to the ground. I think I killed it. I'm not 100% sure what it is. It was in the doll pocket. It's not the doll. Probably the egg, the young of that giant frog. Yeah, but I, the egg was destroyed. It was just a pit. The but pit- it could have been mature enough to survive. Yeah, please remove the black pit from your inventory yeah. as you search around for the answer. Doing that right now. Um, there it is. <laughs> I have it described as a froghemoth egg sphere, and in parentheses, only a pit now. Now it's nothing. <laughs> now it's only leftovers. Yeah. Okay. Well, never mind. My melancholy staring at the doll has been disrupted by a freaking shitbag piece of shit thing. By the way, <laughs> I had a real experience in my life once with this where I carried around a water moccasin in my pocket for three weeks because I didn't know any better. I thought it was just like a harmless snake. And uh, a guy told me, hey, you probably don't want that. And I said, why? He says, well, after about three weeks after being hatched, they would turn poisonous and they will just bite you. And that's why, that's why I had to get rid of it. It never bit me, but I had to get rid of this snake that was just about to mature to what, poisonhood. What, what pocket? In my, in my in a pocket, just like a pair of jeans pocket, I'd carry this. Pair of jeans. Not yes. talking out about this. Yes, because I, I was a sucker for little animals and stuff, and I was Art like, imitates life. And I thought it was like a <laughs> yeah, garter snake exactly. or something. <laughs> Nash and Scott are not so different, you know. <laughs> We're really not. Did you like it? No, I didn't like it. <laughs> you licked the egg. I didn't like <laughs> it. He never bit that's me. That's what though. caused the egg to hatch. I threw him in a bush, mm-hmm. and that was the end of that. That's how you. That's how you raise eggs. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, they just look that. like little uh, ball pythons. Yeah, they just look like normal little snakes. Like, they're not going to yeah. hurt you. 
Uh, water moxin very deadly once it reaches maturity. It turns out. <laughs> oh, the cute little water moccasins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you won't hurt Scotty. <laughs> Well, Nash will then sit there and wonder what he was supposed to have learned from this experience. <laughs> I don't know. Thought it was something we could use. Hope stands up and dusts off her pants. We ready? I stand up with my new javelin, kind of hold it straight and give it the little chuck in your hand and rotate it. Yes. Ready. Assuming the conservationalist is done, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> Chat room wants to know what the name of the snake was. I think it was actually George, and I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> I think I named him George. Poor George. Yeah. Two Poor Georges George. one day. All right, let's go. I'm visibly shaken, though. I just want everyone to see that I'm a little freaked out by what happened. All right, Varel, are you moving to the south, it looks like? Yep. I will right. prepare us down the south passage. Varel makes his way to the southern passage with purpose. Uh, you continue down on a bit carefully, and as you proceed about 20 feet, you can, you can see uh, that the passage splits off into a T-junction with one passage heading to the right, one cavernous passage heading to the left. All right. I will, uh, can I head to the edge and give a peek? You can. Let's make a survival roll while you do that. Cool. I will make that roll. A one. Oh. <laughs> My eyes are still shut. A lot of ones this episode. Mm-hmm. Well, you look down both sides and you have no idea what's going on anymore. You just, you're having a moment of unclarity, maybe the... The battle you just had has raised your your raised your sense of anger and anticipation, and your mind is less clear about being patient and hunterly. That's fair. But for whatever reason, uh, you are unable to learn anything, except for that there's a passage east and a passage west. Companions? Left or right? Uh. Right. Yeah, sure. White. Right. <laughs> White. <laughs> wow. we, we say right, and we mean they're right. So, for like, the so west. Yeah, so. Right? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. So well, then I will make my way down that passage. Okay. Um, so you may proceed down uh, another 30 feet. Okay. The, this passage winds and turns. And as you walk down it, you notice that the sides of the wall become rougher and you notice that the groundwork th th there doesn't appear to be uh, much that's left undisturbed from the groundwork as you could tell in some of the other passages with the, the beasts you've seen it seems that this passage has not been used in some time Excellent. you may proceed okay I will advance the six squares 30 feet Okay, you may continue. You notice nothing. Okay, and as you move to the end of this section of cavernous corridor, you notice it turns to the right. You may continue, if you wish. All right. Okay, and you continue down, and as you peer, you turn to, the, to your right, and as you appear, the cave then again bends to the right, and you notice that you think you've come to an end of the cave. However, there's something on the ground that you notice at the end of the cave. Hmm. So down this hallway in the dark? Mm-hmm. Something Sorry, there. Let me, let me see what you can see. You think you catch a glint of something as your stone shines light down the passage? Oh, yeah, the stone. I re-upped yeah, your hmm. stone. Light stone. I know we were there so an hour. I've given you a fresh stone. Okay. <laughs> they so hurt. I've got so I am sword in one hand back facing javelin under that armpit and stone out in front. Okay. There's something in the sand ahead. We should probably go see what it is. 
Fair enough. We're exterminators now. All right, and I will advance towards the thing. Okay, and as you advance towards the thing, um, you notice right in front of you, uh, to your shock and awe, you see the shadow on the wall. Hmm. And the shadow Stab appears. It. Shadow appears to be in. It's it's of a of a man of a human. It appears to be standing still as if caught. A human. It's in motion. It's a. It does not move. Shadow? It does not move, but it does not correspond in your brain with anyone in your party. As you see the shadow get splayed across the wall. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm naturally curious, and I would become parallel with it, looking at it dead on, and you know, yeah. kind of, kind of owl in my head back and forth, trying to see if it changes the angle. Okay, you owl your head back and forth, and it owls its head back and forth at you. The shadow is it shaped like me? It is not shaped like you. It is shaped For like you. Stab it. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow construct of some kind. An illusion. A puppet. What ho, Shadow? <laughs> <laughs> Say what ho? What ho? Hmm. Are you lost, Shadow? Where is your owner? As you speak to the Shadow, the Shadow appears to lengthen it seems to tiptoe to the left side of the wall I can see you approaching closer but Pharrell? along the wall <laughs> pardon me which was your instruction uh, it, but it like it it's all on the wall right there's no no, no nothing tracing to ground there's nothing tracing to the ground in fact it looks as though it's tracing to you see a skeleton on the ground in the corner. You can't make out its details, but it has a pouch, some rotted clothes. See, this is where you address the dead. I say to Nash. Spirit, you are confused. You are dead. You should rest. Maybe we need to pick up what it has. Maybe that's why I can't rest. Spirit. The shadow tipstoes closer as if it's a creature unseen along the wall. Closer to There's us? No need. It sorry. moves closer to you okay. still. I, I, everyone sees this plainly, yes? <laughs> I do. I, we all see it, Bo. Why don't you, you touch it, Varel? Just touch it and see what happens. Put your spear Died. out. Touch it with your spear. Damn that's, that's a fine request. Spirit, and I stab my sword into the ground next to me and pull my spear out. Spirit, I'm going to inspect you. Everyone sees you. You're not sneaky. <laughs> and I will bring the it out and kind of, you know, on the wall. Like, like on the wall? Yeah. Okay. It recoils as you put the, the as you put your weapon out. It seems to twist its shadow in an unnatural way as it moves away from from your javelin. But then somehow its form moves around and splits and moves around where your javelin is as it approaches ever closer to you. So like the mask dodging bullets? And then now it, its head where its head would believe the shadow comes close to you and is standing next to you now on the wall as your stone illuminates it. And then a separation in its head opens and you see a mouth and you see eyes, not eyes, but just holes where you'd imagine eyes would be. Then its hand comes up and then the shadow slowly peels itself from the wall and a large black darkness looms from the wall, the finger like, um, I don't know. What is that? The the touch of David or whatever? What's that thing? You know that 
Oh, the Sistine Chapel? The... From oh. Arrested Development. That's what I know. I'm just thinking of uh, <laughs> George Michael or Michael George or whoever them touching on the the annual thing they do. Yeah. Um, so where Adam has the tiny... I can't remember what that is. Is it Mother Boy? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but and they have the tiny little uh, wiener. Adam has a little wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the hand reaches out towards you, Pharrell. Very slowly, it's approaching you. And it's in the shape of a human hand. <laughs> For blowing podcast listeners, it. he's blowing on it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do anything. It continues its approach. All right, well, I'll lean back and... Do we recognize it at all? Like, if it, Is there anything about it that we're like, oh, that's George or whoever? It looks humanoid. It's dark. It has a hole where its mouth is and holes where eyes are as it becomes more and more forbidding looking and its eyes grow wider and wider and his teeth become sharper and sharper as the hand extends out farther and farther from the wall and Varel is going <laughs> blowing on the blackness gentlemen are there any further actions or will you let it touch you I mean I've, I've leaned you know I'm limboing back a bit you know into Nash and Dying Talus at this point and looking at them and maintaining that it doesn't touch me. I'm stepping Dying Talus is stepping back to observe from mm -hmm. further away. Nash Pharrell, will let it touch you. Also scooch back just a little bit. You didn't want to stab it. That makes no sense, Hope. <laughs> the hand continues to extend and then it makes a sudden lunge for your face. Whoa. Ooh. 23 to hit. That's a hit. All right. And uh, can I have everyone else roll for an initiative if they wish to engage in combat, please? Jeez. Oh, uh, 18 for me. All right. You take 11 necrotic damage as the hand reaches out and touches your face. And it sort of caresses you, but then also feels like it's penetrating into your jaw. And it saps your strength. Um, and your strength score is reduced by one. Okay. As the shadow reaches out and reaches into your face and begins draining you, and now you feel threatened. Do you want the rest of our rolls? Uh, yes, please. Nine. Or nine for Nash. Mm -hmm. Nineteen. I didn't get any rolls. Nineteen. So you should have Stanley's or uh, Diane Talis's. Diane, I missed it. Diane Talis, sorry. Oh, mine was eighteen. Perfect. And Varel, please. Two. How appropriate. Okay, it drains your strength by one, so your strength is currently reduced by one. Yep. And uh, it. Sorry, how much damage did I say it dealt to you? I forgot. 11. Thank you. 11 of necrotic, necrotic damage. And, um... Okay, perfect. So it, it reaches its hands out to you and begins sapping your strength as you feel it. And as it saps your strength, as you... Life. You can't hear where the voice is coming from. It just reverberates throughout this hallway. I crave it. And you see on the wall the face of the shadow smiling with big, big shadowy teeth. Hope, it is your turn to act as you watch Pharrell be caressed by this shadow that does not belong to any of the party members. Okay, is the shadow is off the wall, correct? Its arm is off the wall, and the rest of it's on the wall. Its arm is off the wall. Okay, perfect. Um, would I be able to shoot at the arm from where I am without hitting Varel? Yes. Okay, cool. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two shots, and I'm going to try and blow that effer's hand off. Mm-hmm. All right. First shot is a 13, and the second one is a 26. Okay. 
You may roll damage dice for both. Awesome. Twenty-five. Total for both shots. Mm-hmm. All right, you fire both shots. <laughs> As it echoes in the small space, the smell of sulfur fills up from your arm cannon, and the, the bullets hit it, and it, the shadow disperses as it splits into ten different directions all along the walls. And then you see little spidery shadows, and they run down the hallway past you into the darkness. Well, that seemed effective. You all right, Varel? I feel weak. I do not like it. Did it say anything to you? It craved me. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay then. All no right. Fargo, man. <laughs> <laughs> I am most disgruntled. Spirit, you make no sense. Your body is now my plaything. And I will advance towards the body at the end. No. Oh <laughs> it doesn't sound good. Um, okay, so you move towards the skeleton that's lying on the ground. The skeleton uh, has very little in the way of remnants of whatever clothing it might have worn in its life. Uh, very rotted. Um, actually, I made a mistake. There was no bag, but what caught the glint from your light you now see it, it has a pair of earrings near its head where its ears might have been and one of the distinguishing features of this particular skeleton is that its bone structure seems a bit odd it has an elongated um bone on its um geez i don't know the name of bones pelvic bone i guess where the yeah. tailbone would be it's a tailbone it's elongated and it has um also the remnants of molted horns from the top of its skull that are not bone, but that are matter that hasn't run it. Or horns right. made out of is their bone. bone. Is I think it's calcium, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what tiefling horns are made from, but it looks distinctly like a tiefling skeleton. Well, Nash, I believe you asked me earlier what I'd do if Hope died. Apparently, I would fight her essence. <laughs> That's me. Congratulations, Hope. Put up a good fight. Yeah. That, that is a fine ability. Oh, thank you. Uh, pardon me, you I've also notice... Oh, never mind. Continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the worst eulogy, Burrell, you could ever have. You would have to also say some nice things about her. Not just fight off her spirit. I, I don't know that there's really anything nice to say about me. Sure like, there it's is. Okay. Sure You're there is. Oh, okay. Thank a you. good mechanic, a fine a shot. Okay. A good friend when we need you. Uh, uh. Yeah. A little twisted lately, but we'll work it out. You have great compassion, <laughs> hidden deep inside you. Uh, horns are epidermal derivatives composed of solid mass of thickly matted hair, carotene, uh, and such that grows from the skull continuously, but do not have a bone yeah, core. Yeah, so horns would be present as part of a skull. Like if a doe dies, yeah, it'd stay there. It would, it would, it would, it would still be there. Yeah, yeah. They just I like to bone grab material. the skull by the horn and pick you it up. The okay. earrings? Yeah. Yeah, you grab it by the horn and you see the earrings sort of go into the dust because they're not attached. There's no ears. I don't. I don't believe there's. Ear bone? Are there ear bones? No, no. It's holes, the ears right? are cartilage. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. So the earrings sort of spill to the side. You pick up the head, the skull. It detaches from its spinal cord quite easily, as this is an old rotted skeleton. Uh, you notice as you go to pick it up that there is a, in one of its hands, there's a rotted piece of papyrus clutched in its hands. Nope. We have earrings and a piece of paper. I will leave them to you. And I will start walking back towards the group to get past them with the skull. Okay, you take the skull with you. All right. Um, 
I'll go up to where the earrings are, and I'll use the bottom of my right, right, right. Okay, I'll pull the shirt kind of down past the riot gear armor on the outside, and grab the earrings with the shirt, and drop them in my bag. And then I'll go to grab the papyrus thing with my shirt. Okay. Uh, you do so easily. It's not challenging to do as you try not to touch them, make skin contact with them. Yeah. Uh, pick them up. Uh, they're ornate. They're golden. And each of them have three diamonds embedded on them. They're very exquisite and pretty looking in spite of the dirt on them. Hmm. So add uh, two earrings with three diamonds each. Cool. And they're not they're not like studs. They're like a long, almost Bajoran type thing. An earring that you would clip to the back of the earlobe and then the chain oh, runs down and hooks cool. in. I'm gonna go two, two. I'm gonna I'm gonna break off the tailbone and put it in my pocket. <laughs> Add a tiefling skeleton tailbone to your inventory. Okay. And you can add the skull to your inventory, Varel, if you plan to keep it for any extended time. How long is this thing? It's like a little carrot, like that? Like a... Yeah. Okay. Who wants to read the scroll? I'll kind of have it sticking out of my shirt, holding it out. It's either Nash or Dientalis. I put my hands up, move out of the way, and <laughs> well, Dientalis have this. I can take a look at it if you like. All right, I'll walk over and hand it to Dientalis. Okay. You accept okay. the scroll? What do I see? Uh, I will show. I will send it to you in Slack. But for the benefit of our listeners, one second, where are you, John? Uh, you see that. And the first few reads for first few words for our listeners read Teneri, Zemi Kifir Sud Piz Haf Kid Zemi Edv Ep. I take it this is a language I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to review your sheet. Just allow me a moment. Sorry about this, everyone. Where is Diantalus? And what languages What languages do you speak? I speak common, draconic, elvish, halfling, and sylvan. You do not speak the language written on the scroll. I don't understand it. Hopefully. How many languages do you speak? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am proficient. Uh, why don't you take a look at it? Don't up my sleeve at home. <laughs> All right, I'll take it back and look at the scroll. All right, you unfurl the scroll and see the following. And you can translate it thusly. All right. It says, Tinieri, the buyer will meet you by the old pump. He'll be wearing a brown robe and usually has his pet hyena with him. You will know him by the dark birthmark shaped in a cross over his right brow. He is to offer me a tome penned in the demonic tongue in exchange for my craftsmanship. Ensure you have this tome before giving him these. And I'm sure it's, ne it's unnecessary to remind you, Tini, but please do not tamper with or adorn the jewelry. My buyer is expecting items in pristine condition. N. So I guess the old pump is down here somewhere. That is good. That is confirmation of our quest. Now the paper strikes you as quite old, as does the skeleton. Well, we push forward and maybe we pay with the earrings. Something. Yes. Okay. Is the business concluded here? You'd like to move on? Yeah. I, I would like move forward. Or Pharrell may want to do something with the skull he just obtained. Yeah, I'm going to go to the end of the hallway and hold the skull up and Spirit, you are dead. Give me back my strength. <laughs> and intimidation or performance has at your choice. I'll do intimidation. 16. 
The walls reverberate with your voice, but you hear nothing in response. Hmm. No. Then we continue. You don't want to destroy the skull? Maybe. I will need it to remind it it is dead. It has become confused. Okay. I, right. however, have only two hands. One of you should share with me the ways of leather working. I would very much like to build a sheath for my sword so I no longer have to carry it everywhere. For now, I will armpit stow. So, javelin under the armpit, uh, skull under the other armpit, and I got my sword in my <laughs> okay. Perfect. And you lead you lead the way with all this material? Yep. <laughs> Alright. You lead the way. Move freely, please. Alright. Going the six again down the hall. Mm -hmm. Sure. Move freely. Cool. I will move uh at a normal pace to keep everyone with me until we get to the junction. But, you know, looking out for things on the wall. I will Nash I'm moving you up. Because you're not moving. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. It's okay. I just don't want anyone to get lost. All right, you you return back to the junction that led left and right. You explored the right side, and now there's left headed east. All right. You can choose to examine if you wish. I'll take two steps into it and then uh, do a survival. Look at the ground, see the workings of the walls and whatnot. Mm hmm. 15. Okay, you crouch low, uh, putting your stuff down momentarily. Take a sniff and a feel of the ground. You see claw marks, scrapes, scratchings. You suspect the basilisk would come this direction. And your sense is that there are enough claw marks to indicate he might not be the only one. It seems a den ahead of... Oh. Basilisks. What do you propose we do? Well, judging by our need to find the river again, or at least the flow of water behind a rock wall, this doesn't seem to be the way. So we go north, then? Well, we defeat all the basilisks. Become Basilisk King? Find Alice, Nash? Uh, it uh, doesn't matter too much to me. It just depends on what your own personal goals are. At the end of the day, we're down here to clear the way for the gang to move through unimpeded. Which means we should slay anything that could prevent that from happening. Which direction might have a bag of live puppies? Because Diane Talus would love to bang those against the wall until they whimper their last. Let's go do that. Let's go wherever innocent life is so that we can de extinguish it from this rotten world. Well, you would certainly know it when it happens, Nash. <laughs> It'd probably be the basilisks then. Speaking of Nash's odd fondness for life, <laughs> if his egg that he carried around has birthed a creature capable of biting and moving, might suggest that the pile of eggs that we saw are not far off from hatching themselves. Well, Just food for thought. More than that, they, this one hatched well after I destroyed the egg. I assumed that this, this thing, the seed was dead. and We just study it when we get out of here, but he was more than that. He or she. I don't know. Do they have gender? Who knows? But you, uh, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Diane Talos has a point. There's so hundreds. We can't go back the way we came. No. We're also not fulfilling our job if we leave those eggs there. Clearly a complication. I would like to remind you all that when we entered this town, I suggested you sniped your target from the crowd. Right. Did we have a weapon that had the range to we do that? could have built a ramp oh. and jumped <laughs> the fate for 
Into the key. Oh, yes. Where would we have built this ramp? We summon it with magics. Oh. Mm. Maybe someday. I'm not opposed to it, but... Regardless, it doesn't matter which way we go. There are enemies in all directions, be it the troll, the headache man, or more basilisks. We simply need to decide what we feel like fighting. Well then, we've only found trouble in leaving anything alive. We advance. Okay. You move forward with purpose down the hallway. Move yourself another 30 feet. All right. And as you come to the end of this particular leg of corridor, the passage moves left. Now, just here in this room, you do notice you see what appears to be the corpse of one of those worms that you saw, but it's fashioned in stone. Or turned to stone. Hmm. It looks somewhat eaten, but you see the indistinguishable front, its eyes that you saw earlier. The spaghetti like tendrils coming from its mouth. Fashioned in stone. Excellent. <laughs> A good you may sign. Continue. You may continue. I, you, you made this observation. Right, I will lead the party past it 30 feet. All right. As you move around the corner, you begin to hear... Oh, no. I hear children. Like moo? Kittens. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like the young. Functioning ecosystem. For for audio listeners, for uh, Kyla's brain is going like I see smoke firing <laughs> at him. All cylinders are going. Mm. He wants to one shot the whole nest. <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to. I will not allow this then the worms are the food the worms clearly have some substance underground they feed the basilisks this is a functioning ecosystem if anything deserves to die here it is the king I'm sorry but these are not haphazard animals this is their home The king, however, eats his own feet. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a sustainable practice. So we back. <laughs> I can block the passageway off. That might be a slower death, though. We could, let's just at least see. Can someone peek? That would be the exact issue with the looking at them. <laughs> oh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We back, and hope we'll start walking back. All right. Is everyone in accordance? It? Yeah. Do we have any means of magical viewing? None that I have. Dying Talus. No. <laughs> I can't tell if he's lying or not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. And I can see the character sheet. All right, so everyone with purpose decides Pharrell is right and that there's a meaningful ecosystem down here. And this cave might be, in fact, the home of the worms, of the great worms and the great basilisks. And return with purpose to the room where you slew the first basilisk who was probably the mom which means we've already destroyed their little <laughs> wait do you say that what, what? Does, I... does Nash say that mm -hmm. I'll say I'll bet this was its mother probably 
probably. Dying tail. The dad or the mom's back in there, and this is the dead. Lift up the tail. Find a vagina. <laughs> Full walk over. Does anyone wish to examine the corpse? Yeah. And Hope got right up. Natural there. twenty. Uh, natural twenty. <laughs> I know you exactly gotta, what this is. You gotta wait for me to call the check. Oh, sorry. sorry. Survival check. Natural we'll twenty. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got excited. You, you examine its. Uh, you're looking for its um, genitalia, essentially, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Listen of the tail. Okay. Uh, Yes, the first Dr. examination, Schwartz. you lift it up and see nothing that would distinguish it either way. But having had some demonstrations from Varel in the past, you remember that lizard kind don't necessarily wear their goodies on the outside. <laughs> and you dig into the folds of flesh until you find it. <laughs> and you find a very red... I mean, it's a, it's a corpse, but still very sort of red and warty thing that you feel is a male appendage. Or that you see that you don't feel it. You see that it's a male appendage. This is the dad. Oh. Well, that's less... That's less bad, I'll probably. Take my hand out and start wiping it off. Dying Talus, you identified this creature. Yes. How long do basilisks live? Uh, do I know that? <clears throat> um, survival? or Is there a better nature check for knowledge than survival? Like... Just for animal kind. I mean, was that something I would have known? Because I like oh, the survival the check was if I knew what a basilisk was. Would nature that... check. The survival check was if you knew what it did. Okay. And in part that identified it. But if you want to test knowledge, we're going to do a nature check, please. All right. I am going to use guidance on myself as I do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's still not going to be good, <laughs> even with all those pluses. Uh, it's a nine. Okay. Uh, let's see here. While I collect that information. Okay. Um, let's see. So based on your understanding, the basilisk itself uh, hunts, but does not chase it. It generally sits and wait for its prey in which it captures it in its gaze and it uses the gaze to turn the creature to stone in a form which is edible to it and then eats sustains itself from the stone uh, notably it doesn't consume regular stone but stone turned from flesh uh, it to your knowledge it re- actually returns back to organic the way that its physiology works is that it returns the stone back to organic material once digested in order to sustain its life. Uh, you do, you are aware that some alchemists uh, know how to process the basculus gullet and the fluids contained within for alchemical reagents. It produces an oil that can return petrified creatures to flesh and life again. You know them from what was your specific question? I was giving you general information, but you had a specific question, I believe. Uh, the specific question Varel asked was, how old, How long do they live? How long do they live? Um, they tend to live uh, for 50 to 100 years. Okay. I relay all that information back. We should get that oil. Seems no. like seems well. like an advantage later in case this you know any of us gets turned we to stone we have something to store it in uh well no <laughs> i have a tiefling tailbone that'll likely do us no good then Just let us continue and hope that we are not dooming the family to incest. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, like this might be the only male father in the... It would make no sense, yes. But in a limited limited cave network, it could be. But at 50 to 100 years, we can assume additional males and females exist. The young will prosper, mate with others of not direct descendants, and continue to eat nasty worm spaghetti. 
I can live with that. Excellent. So can I. To the next hallway, then. <laughs> All right. You move to the north hallway. The north hallway uh, seems untouched, unfettered. Yeah, well, just excellent. regular cavern wall. You notice uh, a lively amount of bugs in the area on the wall. Hmm. Yum yum. Protein. Small yum. millipedes, worms. This is a healthy there is passage. Life. There's life in this passage. <laughs> a healthy Very passage. Good. All right, you may proceed. Okay, you can make your way down all the way to the next room, please. All right, and as you approach, you enter into a smaller network of entrances and exits. There's a passage to the left, west or westward, a passage to the east, eastward, and a, it appears to be a small alcove slightly to the north. <laughs> Ash rushes out ahead of you <laughs> and looks around. <laughs> Foolishly, as he may have triggered some traps. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were none. Oh, good. I love that he ran back, though. <laughs> and Nash goes in, looks down every hallway, and then rushes back into the I group. didn't see him at first, but I caught him. It was, <laughs> it was for the... I wasn't trying to cheat. It was for the chat, so they could see what you were describing. Uh-huh. All right, well, I will enter to the center of the room. Mm hmm Hmm... I will point at the east passage and say, I assume that one leads to spaghetti. These north and west are unexplored then, if we make that assumption. Yeah, uh, yeah I would agree. The passage is without the overhang, is what you're saying. This overhang here is bad. We don't want to go down there. The overhang, we can assume, goes to the creatures. That we met previous. Yeah. There's no guarantee. Nash nods in agreement. The water was to the north, which means likely that's the direction we're ultimately going to head. So if we want to thoroughly check behind us, I would suggest we go to the west first. Agreement, then. And I'll give us a western heading. All right, you move to the western passage. You may proceed down the hallway. It opens up into a small alcove with two long spires standing in the center. The passage um, otherwise appears to have the life of the bugs on the wall, but for the most part is empty. There are stains of oil along the ground, puddled a little bit heavier in this area. Are these bones there? The As bones? You, um, that's just part of the tile, and maybe ignore those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's the problem with tiles, is you can't ever get the ones you necessarily want. Yeah, no um, but, uh, yeah, ignore the bones on the ground, please. But um, there are patches of oil, and um, uh, one thing you do hear is you hear <sighs> a rush of water. Faint. As you did on the eastern side of the cave network. All right, very good. I will uh, advance into the room to here. Okay. And as you advance into the room, uh, you peer down the hall and you notice that very suddenly the, the, the bug life you saw along the walls has receded almost to nothing. Quite, quite rapidly. There are no worms. There are no millipedes. Oh. There's nothing. I am carrying a light. Bugs tend to do that. They, they do recede in the light, but even not, notwithstanding, they're also large and bold uh, in, in these in these caverns. I will advance to the next stalactite. Might. Okay. Right, as you advance to the next stalactite, I'll need you to make a constitution save, please. 
21. Okay. You proceed to the next stalactite without effect. I see the party's moved into that area as well, so I'll require a constitution save from the party, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, mine was a natural 20. Nice. Huh? Red dice on fire today. Right? It's so good. Can I have everyone else's rolls? 20, 21 Five. for me. Mm -hmm. Five. Five. Ooh. Hope. I worry for hope. You're you were captured by a very strong sense of anxiety as you walk down this hallway. Fear guys, clutches as your stomach as butterflies fill it. Guys, I don't feel good about this. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> why is that besides the DM saying ignore the bones? Uh, <laughs> no bones in well, I tried to no, ignore the bones, but it's just on the tile. It's not. There's no actual bone in this room. It just it feels bad. Feels bad. Hmm. Tiefling senses, maybe. Spirit, be you in this room, scaring bugs? You are dead. Rest and give me my strength. You get no response back from the cavern. Can I do an arcana check? See if there's any weird magic happening? Um, Mana okay. waves? Yes. Okay. Uh, that would be a... So that's not great. A 15? You feel nothing except for you and Stanley. And hope, too. It's not magic hope. Well, I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. It's very unlike you, Hope. I will trust your intuition then, and we will turn around for now. I hope we'll walk back. Hmm. Perhaps I could send Pod ahead. She and can't see in the dark. No, but I can make. She can carry a stone. She doesn't have to remain invisible. That's fair. I could give her a stone and light it. I don't know. The, the, you face some many fearsome beasts. It would be better if I was invisible. It would be. I could carry the stone while invisible, but I'd probably get chased. Well, that's see. Here's the advantage. Feral creature will chase me. You could carry the stone, and it was it would be glowing, and and you could be invisible. And the minute you were detected or you were afraid, you could drop the stone. They'll think it's the stone they're after. That's the only object they'll see. They won't see you. All right, I'll do this. Give me the stone. All right, I give her a stone. I cast a, a hoo ha on it, and I give it to her. She, she, the stone floats from your shoulders and moves on ahead. It okay. immediately turns around and lands back on your shoulder, and she says, "I can't go farther." Why? It's cold. The way is cold ahead. Cold, colder than I'm scared. He, is it colder scared. than right here? It's colder than this? No, it's in the natural cold. Chill. From the graves. I can't explain it, but I feel it. It's so cold. Hmm. Let's Do turn I around. have any sense that something happened that tried to scare me, influence me in some way? Um, no. Okay. We have another way to check for now. We don't need to press this issue. I'll lead us out of here. Okay. You move backwards, back into the chamber, junction with four exits. One leading north, east, south, and back west where you've come from now. You originally entered that room from the south. I'll take us back to the four-way intersection with one mm -hmm. dead end. Very good. And head to the northern entrance and peer into this little room. You peer into the northern entrance and find a small alcove rich with bug life. Hmm. There's a veritable colony of millipedes as you press your foot down, they all 
move away, scatter off into the corner. As you fill the room with light, they dig into the dirt. But they're all shades of brown, black, and white. It's the various bugs mill around. Hmm. Must have been a lot of basilisk poo in here. <laughs> but a healthier room, Hope. How do you feel? Is the feeling your, gone? Your anxiety is gone. Yeah. It feels fine. I don't feel strange anymore. I feel fine too, Hope. You hear a voice yeah. ring out from Nash. Nash, your voice got so high. That's, Are you all right? That was, that was Pod. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pod, you felt that. You remember I'm here. I'm staying invisible. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's been a bit busy. I know. Yeah, I'll walk into the center of this room. Yeah, you walk into the center of the room, and it is as I described it. The bugs continue to recede into the dirt or into corners where there isn't light, as they hide from it. Mm. Beetles. Millipedes, worms. Can I go over to this left wall and see if I can hear anything through it and reverberating either the water or sure. something per of that room beyond perception 16 uh, the earth is th thinner there um, you do realize that from that direction that would be the room that you had just left likely there's some amount of dirt between you and that room you do still hear very faintly the moving water rushing in the background. Mm. Although with the bugs in this room making chitter chatter and little diggy sounds, it is hard to hear. Hmm. Well, our water is the other way, but it is scary for some. Do we inspect the previous spaghetti way for options? Or do we... No, I think north is the way to go. Well, this is north. This is the... No, no, back. Back to the room. We muster our courage then and push through. And I'll kind of motion back to that scary room. Would it be beneficial to dig? Have Nash make us a tunnel of some kind and approach this aura from another area? There are strategic advantages to doing that. But if it's an aura, wouldn't that mean it would just permeate once we get through? Would it give you comfort to approach I from feel another? fine now. I don't know what happened. Hmm. Well, let's give it another shot then. Okay. The party may continue. Uh, they continue back into the room that is oily where the bugs have receded. And as you make your way north again, you notice that the bug life, so rich in the room north of the T junction, is seemingly completely absent in this room. Everyone uh, can move forward to their. Did they wish to inch forward? Is there any plan with their proceeding as they make their way back into this room, which caused Hope such anxiety? I'll go to where I previously was by the stalagmite. Yeah, I stepped you go forward there because I didn't you feel hear the, anything. You hear the rush of water, and no one feels anything unusual, apart from some tension. Hmm. I feel fine. I'm a little angry. It's good we talk about our feelings. <laughs> Don't believe the stink eye to Varel. <clears throat> All right, I'll advance uh, to the other side of the stalagmite. All right, you advance. You may move freely. Mm -hmm. The edge of this edge of the room and look back at everybody. 
Rel peers down the room and notices that it winds northward. Northern heading. No bugs? No bugs. No Completely bugs. absent of bugs. Hmm. All right. We'll move slow. Stay close. I'll go to the edge of the next little bend here. Okay. Uh, it is with an event. You can make your next move as you proceed north. Cool. I will uh, dash across the room diagonally to the next little advancement along these peanut shaped rooms. Okay. Just a moment, please. It's like two stomachs. It's like a Klingon. <laughs> do they have two stomachs? They do. They have double oh. organs. Oh. Two livers, two stomachs. I don't know if they have four lungs, but. Or two sets of lungs, I don't know. Okay. You may move, continue moving northward. There's no vent. Alright. And I will take us across this room and view forward towards the bend. Okay, just a moment, please. Here, bringing up newts. All right, you move forward towards the bend, and again, there's no life in this hallway as you proceed down, and you feel a, a cold, very cold chill move down the hallway. There's no breeze, but there's a frigidness that the warm-blooded among you feel. Uh, I think maybe Varel would feel it with impact, less impact. This is, we discussed this, right? Lizard folk are cold-blooded, as lizards are. Yeah, right? but I'm not shut down. I don't, you know. No, no, you feel and have feelings and all that, but generally speaking, you have a different relationship with temperature, right, is what I'm driving at. Yeah. I yeah. Um, without getting too complicated about it, but yes, there's a chill. That everyone can feel. All right. Will you may proceed if you wish. And view around the corner, back to this wall, and take a peek. All right. With the light from your light, you can only see 40 feet down the corridor. But the, the, the sounds of water now, everyone can hear uh, much louder. It's not a raging river. But there's a flow to it. There's a stream, just like in Hungui's room. And uh, you feel as though you're close. All right. You Seems may move your up. next 30 feet if you wish. Seems we approach the layer of the headache man, perhaps. Good. You move closer still. Nothing comes up on your vision yet, as uh, you can't see outside the light radius that you have. And I'm just checking with the dark vision folks. Again, same deal with the dark vision. Diane, tell us you can start to make out where land meets water. Okay. I don't say anything. They'll find out soon enough. All right, Fro. Your your call. Cool. I will advance to there. Oh, all right, thirty feet forward. You move and find you finally find an opening that edges towards water. You can you, you notice that the room opens up into a large cavernous space, and the light fills it, but the light only goes so far and only illuminates so much. You don't see much beyond the beach ahead of you. Hmm. The water moves swiftly with purpose. There is a current, but it's not like rapids or anything. Okay, I'll make my way about eight feet away from the edge. Okay. You make your way close to the beach. You see that, in fact, out in the water, there are little places not very deep in the water. Might be about a foot or two of water, really. And um, it's running along in a very rapid stream, but you notice that there are little islands of rock out in the water. You see a few of those as you as the light begins to fill more and more of the chamber. Hmm. Nash, can you produce more of these rocks? Yes. 
All I need is loose rocks. Hmm. Then I'll put my sword in the ground, put my javelin in the ground, lower the tiefling head from my armpit onto the beach, mm -hmm. and I'll get ready to do a chuck of my light rock out okay. into the water. I'm going to put up a, a, a token denoting rock just so that we have uh, something simulating the light here. You're going to chuck it out, athletics check, please. And you just want to chuck it as far as you can? or Yeah, just as far as I can. How as far? How far can you throw? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what uh, the reasonable throw is. Uh, I, I had this for blood ball calculations, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, I've long since filed those away. <laughs> I got a 23 Okay. on well, a small object. You chuck the rock out as far as you can, and do you see that you all do all the players see the light that's emanating? Yeah. Yeah. The map? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You chuck it out as hard as you can, and it flies across the waterway, and it illuminates a humanoid figure standing on a f piece of rock in the middle of the river. It's black, and then the light travels over top, hits the wall behind, and lands on the ground on the other side of the river. You do see light emanating from it across the river, but the figure, the humanoid figure you saw was briefly illuminated. This black shadow. Did you all see that? And then it's back into darkness and you can't see it. No. Oh. Did you see that? Yeah. I did. No wonder Hope's freaked out. That's scary. Was that what scared you, Hope? I don't know what scared me. I just felt scared. It's okay to be scared. God, let's kill it and be done. <laughs> I'm never going to hear the end of this. That thing's oh scary. God. I don't like it. Ugh. That really gives me the willies. The guy just standing out there. Shall I address it? I could shoot it. Do you see it? If I shift this way. Oh, I can see it. I can't see that far. Okay, the dark vision it's folk, far. it's very dim, but you do, die and tell us and hope, do make out the form of a humanoid. It appears to be standing, almost motionless, but there is some motion as its body sways back and forth. You believe that it is not facing your direction. Wait, could Pod go do something to it? I mean, she can, she can fly out there. The problem is she doesn't have dark vision either, so she'd have to get much closer to see him. So she could, she could perhaps fly out to this stone we can see. Maybe what I could do is I could fly up with one of your stones and drop it on the guy. <laughs> well, you want me to do that? We're not trying to antagonize. Oh, that's true. We have. But I'll be have, safe up top. Yeah, we and have that air. Way you can see it, and then Hope can shoot it as soon as it's lit up. I didn't think of that. We, we have all can air, shoot it. air su super, uh, superiority here. You can fly higher than you can kill see. it with one of your fireballs. <laughs> Pod's getting bloodthirsty. Yeah, she's into it. You've got big fireballs. Pod, why don't you fly... <laughs> or do a quick reconnaissance mission. Fly over the figure and see if there's anything else we don't... We can't see. I won't be able to see it without light. Well, here, take a stone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give her another stone. <laughs> Making stones all day. Stones. Take a stone. There you go. They just stack in my bag. <laughs> you open up your pocket and this giant shaft of light. Big shaft of light. <laughs> it's like, I've been making these all day. <laughs> it's like this big glowing pocket. As long as there's stones, I can make them glow. Full of rocks. She can be any, it's any like object. It's like through the cloth of your, your, your cape, it's like shining through the uh, stitching. Yeah. All right, I'm just looking for a, a token here. Sorry, one moment, please. Big time. All right, it's not going to make any sense. Uh, uh, it's just not going to make any sense, but that'll be our... Yeah, it's not transparent. <laughs> a bright square. Well, I don't have a pixie token. It didn't cost so much money on this damn site. <laughs> free, free stuff is like... Here you go. <laughs> that's a, that's uh, a very... Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so you give her the light, so she's going to admit light, 40-20. Uh, all right, I'll play her. Sea light has sight. Uh, you give her a stone, and she flies up to the roof. Now, she is invisible, so this is just the stone you're seeing. You see the stone float to the top of the chamber, 
and it sheds light down onto the island and now in full view everyone can see there's a humanoid shape its flesh is black it wears no clothes you see flappy little buttocks melted down onto its thighs its skin looks like it's loose and black Ugh. ashen you can see what you think is the back of the head and there are maybe 80 folds of flesh and it sways a little bit it's back to you and as um sorry as pod flies up to the top of the room you hear her go as she beholds it as well you hear the gasp echo throughout and the figure turns around looking for the face and you hear a low groaning echo throughout the room and its face turns to you it has a blackened melted face is open to almost down to a solar plexus with this large hole coming out of it and where you think you're supposed to see nose you see nothing you see these large black holes in its head and it has nothing and immediately as it catches sight of the four of you your heads begin to buzz oh great it's a headache your, your headaches are your head your head is buzzing viciously it turns around, reaches an arm out, and goes. And it begins walking towards you. Well, safe to say not friendly. I fire Eldritch Blast at it. All right, roll for initiative then. Yay. <clears throat> 20. Natural 20. Not that that's good in this scenario, but. Did you add your modifier to that roll, please? Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry, I got so excited. Yeah, the natural 20 doesn't do much for an issue. I got so excited about it. <laughs> Feels good. Yeah. Feels good. That's what that's what matters. I don't have one. Uh, I got 12. I don't have I don't have a modifier for this for initiative. Oh, you might Nine. you might have zero. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, I don't have one. Does not work. Nope. Sorry, I think I only got Nash's uh, nine. You said Hope, is that right? Yes. Okay, Nash doesn't have one, so twenty nine for Hope. Who else we got? Twelve for Diantalis. Eleven for Vorel. Twelve for Diantalis. Eleven for Vorel. Okay, perfect. All right, you begin to see uh, Diantalis casting a spell, but this time you're quicker. Uh, by the way, for reference in the Discord. Slack, I've put a picture of what you're seeing minus the cloth. Oh, creepy. Oh, that's that's awful. The Discord Slack. No, <laughs> the Discord chat. <laughs> oh. Discord chat. It's like, what is he talking about? Okay. <laughs> I'll put it in both Slack and the other place. All right, sorry, uh, Nash, you're up first. Okay, um, let me look at this thing real quick. Oh, geez. And you see Diantalis moving to act, so like a sibling competition, you can act faster since your reaction time is quicker. Look at that thing, you guys. Um, okay, well. Jeez. Uh, uh, okay. And but where are you standing? He's still at that crazy range, though. It's not that too, it's not too far. All right. Um, I am going to very quickly, like a like a six shooter in the night, um, not mess around. I'm gonna fire off a fireball at level three, which has a ninety foot range. My goodness. Yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna go. Hard. Maybe caught in the blast. Oh, wait, how high is she? Not high enough? What's the, what's the shape uh, of your... My my vision uh, thing? My light? Your fire, no, your fireball. Oh, the, okay. So it's, it counts also width-wise as it does height-wise, right? Right. So let me see. The light the does 20 feet all around it. So 20 feet all around it? And then um, the fireball does 20 feet all around it. <laughs> well, 20 feet from the point of impact. Yeah, you can't be certain you won't affect her with it. 
do it. Shit. You gotta live a little mess. <laughs> oh, wow. Hope trying to put pot at risk. I'm just saying, you never win any unless you take the shots. <laughs> I want to see this level three fireball. Well, how high is she flying? We can Pythagorean theorem this. You can't see her, but you see that the stone is roughly 20 feet above her. Okay. Roughly. You don't have an exact measurement. 20 yeah, or 30? No Do you say 30? We've got shadows, though. Yeah, you should pull out the ruler. I said roughly 20. Roughly 20, okay. Okay. You know you want um, to. I, I really do want to. Do it. Trust your gut. Consequences be damned. <laughs> That's how you get metal arms. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having, well, hmm. Okay. I, I, can, I can't count an action as a command to her, can I? Or can I? Um, we haven't really done that. She's her own autonomous NPC. All right. Shit. Although, if you want to take an action to, I don't know, yell instruction to her, she may or may not follow. I don't know. Okay, well, that might metal help. Metal arms. Metal arms. I'm going <laughs> to give Pod <laughs> metal arms. Um, all right. She could have well, little metal arms. What could happen? <laughs> he could pull another, you know, have a fireball flung back at you, and everyone could have metal arms. There we go. <laughs> we become Terminators. It's perfect. Mm. All right. We'll play it. You are far from any kind of third-party rescue at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did you say how many feet out she is, or he is? Hold on, I guess I can look. Let me do that real fast. About forty-five feet. Okay, so that gives me a little wiggle on that. All right, I'm gonna actually instead I'm gonna do acid splash as a sixty-foot range on it. Okay. Um, for now, I don't want her to get it's hurt. A, I really want to. Yeah, there's no point in saving pixies if she's dead. So, so close. Yeah, sorry, where is your? It's a um, cantrip. Okay, it's a dexterity fifteen save. Yep. For the creature that you're facing. Yep. So roll for that. Okay. You fire out the acid splash, and it, the, the big loogie of acid just sort of flies across the water, and hits it. Roll damage. Roll your damage dice. All right. Does it also confer any disadvantage? It's just acid. Okay. 1d6 acid. Or 2d6 now, I suppose. 2d6s, yeah, at this level. Yeah, yeah level 5, yeah. Uh, that would be a total of 6 damage. 3s. Okay. So you hurl the loogie of acid across the field, and it splashes on top of it, coating it with this thing, and you see some smoke bubbling on the skin. Um, wait, what type of damage is it? It's... Uh, acid, right? Sorry, acid damage is correct, right? Hold on, yeah. where does it say? I, just, I would guess. Yeah, uh, it says two, two, 1d6 acid damage. Oh, okay, so, there it is. I see it. Yeah, yeah acid that's damage. fine. So it's yep. Yeah, so uh, you deal that you deal the six damage to it. Okay. And it's, it sort of melts its skin somewhat further as its eyes droop down and it turns towards you, facing you, and but it appears unmoving and not to react to it apart from the physical damage you see inflicted upon it okay as it starts to lumber forward oh boy all right um anything else i'm going to uh be a little bit of a chicken poop and move a little bit just to move and i'm gonna go right there okay perfect uh, you do that, Nash, and uh, Pod uh, drops the light source into the water bloop, and returns to your side. Uh, well, you don't see what happens, but you feel her return to your side. Okay. But unfortunately, the light source is gone. Okay. It is now um, Diane Talis' turn. All right. I'll stick with what I said I was going to do. Um, mm -hmm. And fire two Eldritch Blasts at it. And that is going to be, for the first beam, that is going to be a 18 plus 8 to hit. Very good. Um, and then for the other one, it's going to be a 13 to hit. Sorry, what was the first roll? Uh, first one was 18 plus 8. Okay. And then the other one was a total of 13 to hit. Okay, so the first one hits. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, nine damage for the beam. Uh, force damage. Perfect. Second beam misses, I'm guessing. Um, nope. They're, they're sorry. The the set the first second beam. The low the thirteen roll misses. Okay, yeah. So then yeah. just one beam. So how much damage, sir? Uh, what did I say? <laughs> I've already I'm moved sorry. the dice. I'm sorry. Do you want me to just re-roll it? Oh wait, no. I just moved the dice, so it's uh, it was nine. S chat room nine damage. Okay, perfect. Unless chat room says differently, but that's what the dice is on. No, right. we'll take that ruling. Perfect. All right, so uh, this is Eldritch Blast. Yeah, force damage. Yeah, the blast fires out across across the like. Uh, force damage. Okay, yes. perfect. You do your nine points of damage to it, and skin flakes. It's ashen skin flakes off and melts, but it appears it, the force appears to push it, but it continues relentless in your direction. All right, I will uh, maybe move back a little bit, but otherwise still going to be here. All right, Varela, it is your turn. Cool. You say it's it's approaching, right? It's approaching. It will approach on its turn. Cool. Uh, any trouble with me grabbing my weapons out of the sand? No. Cool. Uh, you can you can pick up one weapon as with the free action. If anything requires two hands or two motions or anything like that, it's an action. Cool. That's what I was asking. Cool. So then I will. Uh... I will. I can't see it, so I need to think about my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, what was lighting it up has been dropped into the river. You see a large stone glowing, the light glowing under the water as it. Is this shallows water. here out into the first rock? There's about fifteen feet of water. Yeah, the water the the water uh, doesn't look very deep. It may be a few. It might come up to your thighs. Okay. All right, then I will pick up uh, Maw Storm, my sword, and I'll run the 40 feet out to this point and stand on that rock. All right. Okay. Ready in action to attack it. Going to ready in action to attack it on that rock. Perfect. Right. Okay. If it enters my That's, range. If it enters your range. Uh, Hope, your turn. Okay, I'm going to wade out into the water as well. I'm going to mm -hmm. head up about... 15 feet so that I can get in range and I'm gonna power up my arm and do my two shots okay perfect and you have vision with your dark vision on it perfect Yep. okay do your two shots alright so a 22 for the first one and then a 17 for the second okay both hit what type of damage is this please piercing okay so 28 uh, 20... I need 31 to the, damage. I need to know the damages separately, please. Oh, okay, perfect. So the first one would be... 15... Uh, I guess 16.5 plus 3 is added on to one of them. Oh, you're dividing it into two. Okay, I need, I need, I'll need the numbers separately, uh, probably a lot in the future as resistances become a thing. Oh, okay, um, gotcha. The damage, the damage you inflict is halved. Oh, three each uh, time. Oh, perfect. Okay, sorry. The, da um, the damage you inflict is halved on each attack. It might matter because one might be a large amount, one might be a small amount, like, you know, so. Um, okay, so you see that the bullets enter into it having done nothing, almost like it's Play-Doh. Uh, it did damage it as pieces of its flesh burst off and <laughs> but it continues to walk uh, unabated and it doesn't appear to be very damaged by your guns. Okay. Even though that's a lot of damage. <laughs> uh, two attacks. All right. Um, hope. So let's see. 16s. Okay. Um, so now the creature begins its walk. And as it walks, it begins to... And it moves closer to you, Pharrell. And its eyes begin to captivate you. I need you to make a DC. I'm oh, sorry. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. Eight. Okay. Um. So you feel a buzzing in your head, and you stare your opponent down, looking at its hollow blacks. And the hollow blacks seem to reverberate 
and in your mind you feel unrest and uncertainty and you feel your spirit wither inside your shell your scales you, you, your, the fullness of your soul does not feel that it fills things out that it fills out your body and you begin to feel despair wow anyways uh, you take six <laughs> points of damage necrotic damage okay from his gaze I'm just saying wow because I rolled uh, three ones. Oh. oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, you man. You said wow, and I was like, and Varel three... instantly killed. And what happened? <laughs> sorry, three, three ones, one, two. Oh, sorry, it's five necrotic damage. My math is wrong. I basically rolled one, two, one, one on my dice, and that's when I was wow. <laughs> I was like, how's that possible? Spooky um, wow. Uh, yeah, so um, your soul, uh, your spirit inside feels assaulted but there's no weapon there's nothing touching you merely its gaze seems to diminish your soul and then it continues as it splashes into the water moving towards you and it speaks in a language no one here understands and it's not moving its mouth it's just echoing from its speaker hole as it's Erendabule Harabalule as it begins chanting and your head is filled with a major headache. Um, it's going three feet. It also pulsates now. That buzzing feeling becomes strong and hope and Vorel. I need a ruler again. It's this button right here. Checking those two. Hope and Varel, you take five necrotic damage as well. Additionally, just its proximity seems to create a buzzing feeling and a pain in your mind as your your it feels like your brain is shrinking inside of your head. Ah. Uh. Okay, uh, Nash, it is now your turn again. Okay. Can I have my reaction in range. You can have your reaction. My apologies. Excellent. Yes. I will make a reckless attack for the first one. Mm -hmm. So you have advantage uh, on me next turn. Very good. It's a 17 to hit. Okay, hit. The second attack is a 60. Okay, roll your... They're both hits. Roll your damage separately. Give me both numbers, please. Cool. This is slashing damage. Six slashing. Mm -hmm. And eight. Uh, 11 slashing. I, and I still haven't recovered my strength from the ghost, right? Right. That's cool. right. So, 6 been... six is reduced to 3, 11 is reduced to 6 as you try to slice it. <laughs> its body is resistant, it appears, to your attacks. As the, the sword, you bring the sword up, and it just it's almost like it's made of some sort of impervious flesh metal. <laughs> as you hack away at it. And it, it appears to resist your attacks. It is, is unrelenting as you're caught in its gaze and your body buzzes with the pollution of its thoughts. Uh, Nash, now your turn. All right. Um, I am going to whip around and wade out to about... Oh, actually, just put it there. And I'm going to yell... This is a fight we cannot lose. I'm gonna make Varel super huge, and I cast uh, Embiggen on him or whatever it's called. Hold on, <laughs> my name. I would I'm gonna cast Enlarge. Uh, I assume he's a willing a willing participant, yep. and uh, I'm going to cast it at level one. And. It's a level two spell, I believe. I'm sorry, level two is what I meant, just not three. And um, burp, 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 burp. that's it. I'm going to cast it. Okay, perfect. Then uh, you see before you Varel's form once again grow to twice the size, 14 feet tall. Okay. Uh, I will s see this and smile and stay right where I'm at and end my turn. Uh, did you move You move closer, didn't you? I did. I moved up right a quarter kitty corner to hope. Okay, perfect. Uh, Diane Talis, it's your turn. 
All right. Uh, everybody has piled in, so I don't have a clear shot of the creature. So I'm going to move up to where I can actually see him uh, to the northern, more northern side of the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is cast Hex on him. Okay. And then fire two more Eldritch Blasts at him. Okay. Roll the, roll the damage dice, or roll the attack dice, please. Okay, I've got a 18 to hit, and a 19 to hit. They both hit? Okay. What type of damage is this as well, please? Uh, yeah, I'll break it down for you. Um, mm -hmm. So the beams themselves do force damage. Uh, so the first beam does uh, 15 force damage. The second beam does 11 no okay. 12 force damage you already have sufficient damage to kill it so describe your oh. killing blow oh geez that was way easier than i thought i didn't uh, need to nice. hex that guy oh ah, crap uh, i wasted it right. on large all right go ahead <laughs> um i move up and uh just whisper this is the end of the headache man and just Casually flick my wrist and two beams go out, one through the body, one through the head. Okay, and it explodes into particulate. <laughs> you hear. Gosh dang it. As the room fills with silence for a brief moment, but then you hear the rumbling of rock. <laughs> You see from the light across where you threw the light stone, another of the self same. You see a hand, black and fleshy, break out from the wall, climb through, and break itself free. You see its eyes as it gazes down across the river. You hear the sound come from behind you down the alcove as another one bursts through from the wall. You hear the noise again echoing out in parts, uh, other parts of the chamber that you can't see. And you hear many more as they descend upon your location. And that's where we'll leave it for this week. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, nice. yay, I made him big and it wasn't a waste. Woo! Yeah. yeah. I was seriously worried I totally blew that. Blew my I ultimate. Well, <laughs> now my hex spell isn't going to be wasted, too. This is all good. This is all coming up roses. How are you rotating... Oh, that's awesome. Look at him rotate. All right, that's great. Okay. I'm a Pac-Man if I ever die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're yellow already. You're all your set. All right, well, fantastic. Oh, my gosh, that's great. Um, uh, look where we're at, everybody. Big old hairy uh, piece of business when we get back next week for yet another edition of There Will Be Dungeons. Now, a reminder, if you listen to the show and you enjoy it, then uh, what you're going to be wanting to do is go on over to therewillbedungeons.com and send us your uh, emails you can uh, uh, check out the website, check out the archives. Everything's on the uh, the uh, Twitch site for the VODs. Of course, there's YouTube versions of the show as well as the podcast. So no excuse for you not to go back and listen to everything you've missed if you've indeed missed some. We saw some new people in the chat. Always good to see that. Uh, if you're saying on the podcast, man, I'd love to come live. When is it? It's every Saturday, 3 p.m. Mountain Time to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. That's how long we run. And uh, if you come on in, you'll be joined by with friends in the chat, and we'll all hang out together. There will be dungeons.com. That is going to do it for us. Thank you all for listening. Uh, is there anything else? I guess that's it for me. No, that's it. Is that it? Thank you for thank you for being great players. Yes, for being great. Listeners. Thank you for everybody being great at everything. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, for myself, for Bo, for John, for Kristen, and for Kyle. We'll be back next week. And we'll see you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. All right.